What's up people, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. So today, I'm gonna talk about the detailed way I organize my crates. So before I start, if you could do me a huge favor, just hit that like button down there. It'll help my algorithm so more people can see my videos. If you don't subscribe, hit that subscribe button, all that fun stuff. Anyway, I do have a confession. This is actually a topic that I've been holding back forever. I've thought about talking about this a million times and I've kind of always held it back because it's a big part of my secret sauce. But, um, you know, my man Murphy here suggested it. So shouts to Murphy. Got me thinking about it and uh, I figured, you know, why not? Why not teach you guys kind of how I organize everything and show you and uh, hopefully it could help somebody. I mean, at the end of the day, we all DJ our own way. You know, you can't DJ exactly like me. I can't DJ exactly like you. So no reason for me to hold back. So here we go. Now my crate systems are so type A and so detailed that I have to do this in multiple videos. I can't cover this in one video alone. So today we're gonna talk about my dinner crates. Yes, I have detailed, detailed dinner crates and I'm gonna tell you why. So quick story time to give you guys some perspective. I did my first wedding wedding by myself when I was 17 years old. That's when I got thrown out to the wolves and I did my first ever wedding. Ever since then, I've been at it and I've always been the youngest guy in my market. As the youngest guy in my market, I lost a lot of jobs to, you can guess it, what did people say about me? Hmm? What did those vets say about me? Why would you hire the young guy? He's not gonna know anything about music. All he's gonna know about is the new stuff. He's young. So, to show all those fuckers wrong, I decided to make detailed crates for everything. I started just designing these crates from the ground up, doing research, trying this song, trying that song, and over the last probably more than 10 years, I've been working on all these crates. And I have a crate for everything. I have a crate system for dinner, dancing, clubs, sweet 16s, proms, like you name it, I have a crate system for it. But it's totally necessary because it's allowed me to never have to second guess, like man, what should I play next? Oh my God, I don't know. Or what's the name of that song? I can't think of that song. Or wow, this type of music is really working, but I can't think of any more of that type of music. Like anytime I've ever been in that situation, I made a crate for it and I narrowed stuff down. See, when it comes to my crates, there's no fluff. Like it's not just like all the rock music, you know, that are is slower for dinner. It's literally the rock songs that work best. So that's kind of how I was able to narrow it down and kind of give myself a huge advantage. So let's talk about my dinner crates. I have very detailed dinner crates because I think dinner is a huge opportunity that's missed by a lot of details. DJs. It's our opening set. It's the way that you can set the mood and really get people grooving and feeling good and hopefully having that one extra drink, which is always my goal. Like every time I DJ during dinner and in general, I want people to just have one or two more drinks than they were planning to have. You know, you ever be at a restaurant or hanging out somewhere and just the vibes right and you're having a great time and you had one extra drink than you were planning on? two extra drinks, right? That's what I want everybody at the wedding to do because then they'll be looser, they're gonna be feeling good, and they're more likely to dance. So I use dinner as an opportunity to accomplish all this stuff. Now, with that being said, for the same exact reason that you mix during dancing portions, I think you should also mix during dinner portions. The timing, the programming, the beat mixing, making it all make sense and blend together nice, it's the best way to truly get people to kind of vibe. Now, if you wanna take these ideas and stuff and just put them on an autoplay, you can do that too. It's just not gonna work as well. So my dinner crates are organized like this. But I'm not just gonna plop it up on the screen. Obviously, you might not understand where I'm coming from with certain names and titles, so we're gonna get right into it. First of all, when it comes to names and titles, they have to make sense to you. Some of the crates I have, you might not agree with the title, but it just, it's how I think of music. We all think of music differently, right? One person's hipster music might be another person's alternative rock and so on. So you wanna make sure that you have it organized and structured and kind of named the way you understand them best so you can easily find the tunes that you need. So my first dinner crate is called Doors Open. It's basically a crate with like 50 or so songs that are upbeat, energetic, from all different types of genres that I play from when we open up the doors to the ballroom and the guests initiate initially come in. Now, depending on your market, maybe you're already in the ballroom for cocktail hour or whatever, but where I'm from, you know, they do cocktail hour in a separate room typically, and then they bring all the guests into the ballroom at once, and they give them like 15, 20 minutes to get seated before we start with like formalities, introductions, all that stuff. So this is the folder that I play out of when those people are walking in. Now, I think it's very, very important to keep things upbeat. You want people to walk into a party. It's a wedding or it's a special event, whatever. You want people to walk in 
mind that, oh, okay, okay, it's gonna be a good night, it's gonna be a good night. And that's what this crate is completely filled with, just nothing but bangers from all different genres. And then based on the crowd, that's kind of how I pick out what I wanna play and whatnot. Give you some ideas, like Boom by X Ambassadors is in there for me, uh, Move Your Feet by Junior Senior, like stuff like that, stuff that's like not played all the time at weddings or not played all the time for even dancing, like not your typical stuff, just like upbeat, fun stuff that like just, I don't know, just makes you move, that's just different, that kind of sets you apart, that lets the guests know that this is gonna be a little more of a different wedding than what they're used to. Now, if you wanna see every song that's in my Doors Open crate and all my crates in general, there is a link in the description, so check that out. So my next crate is Dinner Starters, and it's not a big crate, it's like eight or nine songs or something like that, but it's basically the songs that I use to open up dinner. So let's say, formalities are done, you make the announcement however you make it, right? Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated. A representative will be around to escort your table through the buffet or whatever you say, right? You're making the dinner announcement, sit your asses down, it's about time to eat. And the first song I play right after making that announcement, I pull from that crate. I try and keep that as like a variety, right? I have some new songs in there, some older songs, some classics, whatever. And it kind of is like the anchor to my sets. Like even when I start a dance set, I always try and use a different song to start my dance set every single time because it's gonna make your set different. You know, you start at 100 BPM, you're gonna end up somewhere different than if you started at 70 and so on. So I have eight or nine songs in this list and it's just some great songs to kind of like kick off dinner, perfect vibe, and then I kind of take it from there. My next crate is acoustic covers. Now, acoustic covers is essentially just acoustic covers of regular songs, like the name states, I guess. I guess it's kind of obvious, but I have like, so some of it is just acoustic versions of regular songs, right, by the same artist. Some of it is acoustic versions by a different artist, like Boyce Avenue or something like that, that covers modern songs. And I basically tap into that crate when I have a couple that's like, oh, we really want to chill during dinner. My dad, like, really is really funny about like loud music or like, not that I'd be loud, but you know what I mean? Like, oh, we don't want any like crazy beats during dinner or anything. Like we just want everything super chill, but we don't care what you play. That's a good way to really keep it chill and keep dad happy, but then still have like all the drunk people at table five singing along, you know? There's a couple good bangers in there that I kind of use for those situations, but I don't use that crate every wedding. My jazz crate has cobwebs. I, I don't play jazz ever, ever, ever. I have a six song set in my jazz crate crate. It's literally listed in order how I would play it, right? I kind of long mix it. Um, I pick certain songs that are more newer, that are more fuller, instead of like older Miles Davis stuff so that you can like barely hear, just in case I come across a couple or a client that wants jazz for some reason. It's super rare, but you should always have a nice jazz set in your back pocket just in case, and that's what that crate's for. Now, Rockish is my Rockish crate. So it's mostly classic rock. There's a couple other rock songs in there. It's super detailed. I think I have I don't know, 40, 50 songs in there or something like that. And it's all the bangers, just all the bangers, the deep stuff, the stuff that like your parents and grandparents smoke weed to in like the 60s, like the deep stuff, but then like the mainstream stuff, just like a little combination of everything, all the good stuff. Like if I have an older crowd, if I got a bunch of boomers out in the crowd, a couple dudes that are bald, but still have their ponytail in the back, you know what I mean? Like those guys, like then, then I'll tap into this crate and play a couple, you know, throwbacks or whatever. Now 90s Boo Boo Rock is a name I totally made up. It's basically for all like that 90s like feel good rock from back in the day, it's like, A -I -O -U. like in all those songs, you know, Hootie and the Blowfish and that type of stuff. And I'm sure someone's gonna, I didn't even look it up. I'm like uneducated on this sort of thing. So I'm sure someone's gonna comment, dude, Hootie and the Blowfish came out in the year 2001, whatever. It sounds like 90s to me. You wanna make your crates make sense to you. And whenever I hear songs like that, I think a 90s boo-boo rock. That's exactly what that is. Now, the cool thing about that genre, if you understand where, you know, like Blind Melon, stuff like that, if you understand where I'm coming from, cool thing about that genre is like the people that like that genre love all of that shit. So I made a detailed crate. I think there's like 15 songs in there of all the best hits that kind of go, you know, within that realm from that time period. And if you have a crowd that likes that stuff, you could just go off, bang, 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 right in a row with like all those hits and really have people like belting shit out at their tables. So that's kind of what I use that crate for. Now, TRL hits is a crate full of TRL hits. Uh -huh. 
Now, if you don't know what TRL is, Google it. It was a show back in the day with Carson Daly, and they used to do like a daily video and yada, 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 and it was life back in the day. That's kind of how you found out about new music. That's kind of how they judged like what music were like popping the most. If you were on top of the TRL charts and you were top of Billboard as well, it kind of like was, it was correlated and all that. So it was a big deal back in the day. Now, if you have guests that are in like their late 20s, but mostly like early 30s, mid 30s, they don't know all about those TRL hits because they watched it when they were a kid or, you know, when they're in high school and college and all that stuff because it was so big back then. So I basically went through all the TRL hits, right? All the ones that topped the charts in TRL and I picked out the best, I think like 15 or 20 songs from the TRL hits to play in case I need it. So if I have like that kind of group of people like in their 30s and stuff and I want to throw it back, it's a lot of boy band stuff in there, Britney Spears, J-Lo, like stuff from that back in like the 2000s, like early 2000s, late 90s. So it's a good thing to have, you know, people are into that sort of thing and again, I'm kind of judging my crowd. How old's my crowd? I can tap into this folder. You know, you're kind of seeing a pattern. The next crate is Reggae Mon. Listen, everybody likes reggae, so you should have a reggae crate. Do I play from it all the time? Not really. I mean, sometimes, like, obviously you have your Bob Marley, and I have more deeper stuff in there. I picked out a solid, like, 20 songs that are, like, really, really good, I think. You know, so if I have any Rasta people, you know, in the crowd, I can definitely please them. I still will throw in, like, a Bob Marley here and there, because everybody likes Bob Marley. And, uh, you know, it's a good way to see which person in your crowd smokes pot. Now, my funky crate is my second favorite grouping of crates within this dinner conglomerate. I don't know. Funky music is the shit. It's universal. Everybody likes funky music. And my funky crate doesn't necessarily contain all funk music, like what you would think funk is. It's just different songs and di from different artists, and really kind of different genres, but they all have like a funky groove to them, you know? Like, I have everything from regular funk to like Sledgehammer by Peter Gabriel, you know, to me, because that's kind of funky. Or like Higher Love by Steve Winwood. That's kind of funky to me. You know, so like, it's not all funk music, it's just funky stuff. And I basically organized it into two separate ones, right? So I have my early funky crate and my later funky crate. Early on, beginning of dinner, that's where I can play like the more smooth stuff, right? The more chill, the, you know, That's All by Genesis or like, you know, like Isaac Hayes or something like that. Like more chill, kind of like funky, groovy stuff. And then I move into the later folder at the tail end of dinner to kind of hopefully promote dancing, right? So my later folder will have like, you know, some Cool in the Gang, some like All Night Long by, um, who's that by again? Shit, Lionel Richie, you know? All that stuff, right? And it kinda, I kinda use that to bridge into trying to get people to dance organically. If you see in my other videos, I'm a big proponent of that. I wanna use dinner and mix dinner in the right way where people just dance on their own. I don't have to say a word on the mic. And my funky folders is the second biggest grouping of songs that I use to make that happen. Now next is my country folder. Gotta have a country folder. Now I don't do a lot of country weddings, but I do do weddings where they like country music, so I can always pull from that folder. I limited it to just the hits. I think there's like 35-ish or 30 songs in there, something like that. But it's really just the best country songs, in my opinion, um, that are great for dinner, great for sing-along, great for like, I don't know, if they're into country, you'll have plenty of music to kind of show them in there, you know? And so I, I kind of use that for that, just in case I have to go down the country road. Country is something I'm not super well-versed in, like off the top of my head. So if I get into a situation, I definitely need to lean on a folder. Oh yeah, you know, because because in general, right, when you have these crates, you lean on them. So like, it's like, all right, well, I need another country song. While you're looking through the folders, if you see the names and the artists, you're going to remember what the, what the song is. Oh yeah, 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 I forgot about that song. You know, it's so much harder to do it off the top of your head. And that's a big reason why I made these crates. There's a lot of DJs out there that mix off the top of their heads, and I'm sure they do a great job. And I honestly could mix off the top of my head and do a great job, but you're not going to have have as much variety in your set unless you're some kind of genius there's no way you can think of a thousand songs you're gonna stick with the same ones you always play the same kind of sets it'll get stale when you DJ off the top of your head there's no way you have as much variety as someone like me or anybody else that has a big deep library with detailed crates that they play off of you know with my detailed crates I'm always playing something different. I'm always, oh yeah, oh yeah, I forgot about this. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Oh, maybe I'll play this. You know, and you can go in all these different directions rather than stay with what songs you're comfortable with. So having a crate system like this, doing the homework, it's literally a no-brainer, especially if you do this for a living or you want to do this for a living. Now my next crate is the Rat Pack crate, right? So your Frank Sinatra, your crooners, like all that stuff, limited to like, you know, my top hits, no, no fluff, just, I think it's like maybe 15, 20 solid bangers if I need to go down that road. My classic crate is kind of just like, 
like classic, you know, music. I don't know. To me, like Billy Joel's classic. Shaw Day is kind of classic to me. That's in there. Like, I don't know. It, it's kind of how I think of music. So if I just, you know, if I need to take a step back in my set and kind of just drop like a, a good old, you know, classic, I go to my classic folder. I don't know. Now my chill acoustic is like 50 something songs deep and it's everything from like John Mayer, Jack Johnson, like, you know, uh, Amos Lee or Amos Lee or however you say her name or his name. I don't even know if it's a girl or a guy to be honest with you. I think it's a guy. What else? Jason Mraz, all that stuff. So it's basically my acoustic list. A lot of people like acoustic. I've had a lot of weddings where like the couples wanted acoustic the whole time. So I really stacked this with like all kinds of songs, hits and deeper stuff. So I can do an entire dinner all day without even having to think so. Now my piano fire crate is this kind of a random idea I had. I was like, well, why don't I just put all my favorite songs that the main instruments of piano in a crate. And then if I play one piano song, I can play a couple more right after. And that's what I did. So. Random idea. Now my freshness crate is when I want to freshen up my set, right? It's, it's a lot of modern music, some throwbacks, but like mostly modern and a lot of music that like I don't play all the time, that most people don't play all the time. Stuff that like you kind of heard on the radio for a couple months when it first came out and then it was kind of forgotten about. You know, stuff like that. If my set's getting stale, right? I'm mixing dinner and I get no reaction from nobody. It's kind of stale. I'll refer to my freshness crate to kind of pick out a song or a couple songs that I haven't played in a while to kind of set me apart a little bit. Or if I just want to have a unique set, you know, it's just a great crate to have. I stacked it with like, I think there's like 40, 50 songs in there. There's a lot, a lot of songs in there. It's just a lot of stuff that like I heard on the radio or heard somewhere and I was like, oh my God, I forgot about that song. And then I added that to the list. So that's basically my... I forgot about that song list and yeah. Now the next one's my hipster crate. That's for like my Mumford and Sons and my Vance Joy and all that. That's hipster music to me. It might be alternative rock to you. It might just be weird. I don't know. Whatever you call it, I call it hipster. So if I have any hipsters in the crowd drinking craft beer, you know, I play that stuff. And it's also a genre that like you might not know a lot about off the top of your head unless you're into it. So I definitely had to make that crate to get myself really familiar with like all the hits you know, that are kind of underground, but kind of mainstream or whatever, but it's all the songs they like. And whenever I do have those people in the crowd, I can always get them to sing, get them jamming. It's like, I kind of get them, you know, it's, it's, oh, it's a good crate to have. Very good crate to have. Next crate is Motown, self-explanatory. Mine is no fluff, just all the hits, all my favorite ones to play during dinner and stuff. I think I have like 15, 20 in there. Every wedding DJ should have a Motown crate, so. And my last crates are my sing-along crates. They're my favorite crates out of all my dinner crates. They're my go-to. I use them every single event. I have them broken down into two categories. One is slow and one is regular, right? The regular one is just upbeat, kind of in between sing-along stuff. Like, I Want It That Way by the Backstreet Boys. Tell me why. Fat Bottom Girls by Queen. Oh. What's Up by Four Non Blondes. Can't Take My Eyes Off of You by Frankie Valli. You, you know, stuff like that, right? All kinds of genres, but all just sing along, like well-known stuff. And basically I use that stuff more to middle dinner, to tail end of dinner, to kind of get people really grooving and hopefully dancing on their own. My slow sing along is all like ballads, but like well-known ballads. So if you want to like slow things down for dinner, right? They just serve dinner. You're at an elegant place or wherever you're at, right? But you want to keep it just real chill, like a perfect like dinner vibe, but you still want people to rage and sing along and belt stuff out. I, literally, I made a completely list full of ballads and that's what my slow sing-along thing is so everything from like I will always love you by like uh, Whitney Houston that shallow song from uh, I'm like blanking on all this stuff with the Bradley Cooper and the Lady Gaga stuff like that right slow elegant like like great dinner music but you still kind of want to belt that out you know and also gives me a good idea of like what kind of crowd I'm dealing with with all these sing-along songs as I'm playing certain sing-along songs if they belt out certain ones I know what dancing songs are gonna work later and vice versa it, it's just a telltale sign if people people are jamming to my girl, I'm gonna do a Motown set later. If people jam to Fat Bottom Girls by Queen, oh, then I'm definitely gonna play some classic rock. ACDC and stuff later for dancing, you know, and, and, and everything in between. It's a good judge of what kind of crowd you have, what they like, what they don't like. And at the same time, you are just priming them. You're, you're just, you're motivating them to have another drink and just to feel good, have a good time and really rage later. Like if you don't make any crate that I talked about today, if you just throw this whole video out the window and don't do any of this, at least make the sing-along crates. They're worth their weight in gold. And that's it for my dinner crates. I'll be coming out with another video with my dancing crates. And I mean, let me know in the comments if there's any other crates you'd like me to talk about. I have stuff for clubs, I have stuff for sweet 16s, proms, 
everything. So I don't know. It's just, it's a lot of work and a lot to talk about and whatnot. So I just want to make sure you guys want to hear it before I make it. So I came out with this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you took something away from this. If you have any questions too, leave it in the comments or hit me up, uh, weddingdjtips at gmail.com. And as always, thank you for watching. See you guys next time.